Good morning, everyone. Shall we start? Okay, so yesterday, in the last workshop, we talked about our stories, right? I thought I'd begin by just introducing a couple of the roles I see myself in in the story of my, my life, since I haven't spoken with all of you individually, but in case you uh, didn't realize by now, I work in Germany. I do have some German background as well as British and Irish, but I was born in America in the 20th century. <laughs> Here we are in the 21st century, and also I have many roles in the 21st century. I'm a mother, a teacher, um, a gardener, a yoga teacher, mindfulness practitioner, and most importantly, I think, a human being at what is a very pivotal and pressing time for our planet and to be this human being species on this planet. So, um, I will talk soon about my role as a human being, as a teacher, in my profession, but also um, before we begin, I hope we may practice a little mindfulness together. So for one minute, look at this picture in silence. If you start to notice thoughts in your mind, what language are they? Switch them to English. I'm a language teacher, so we begin by getting our minds in English. What do you feel? What do you see? What do you hear? What do you smell? So, thank you for that moment. And now we are all here together. My agenda for today is to begin with some background and my why of why I teach what I teach and how I teach what I teach. And I'd invite you to reflect on that as well. Why are you a teacher? Um, why do you teach how you teach? I will go into the pedagogical approach, which is the background of my teaching methods as well. I'd like to show you how I apply that, those methods in my Business English C1 course. Uh, hopefully you can have fun with the pitching activity where I'm going to ask you to um, pitch or uh, show us uh, an element of, of, of a pitch for a business idea. Um, and then the reflection and, and sharing, of course. So, the background and purpose, the why. So before you get your phones out, and hopefully this QR code works. Oh, I just realized maybe I do it without the Mentimeter. I didn't open up the Mentimeter. Um, actually, reflect for a moment. For 30 seconds, reflect on your why. Why do you teach? I did this a few weeks ago. I went to a conference for language teachers in uh, Brighton in the UK. And we did this as a part of the activity. And I thought it would be a nice moment to do that together as, as well. What is our why for why we teach? So think about that for 30 seconds. In 30 seconds to one minute, the Mentimeter will be ready. Then I'd like you to, to post, if I invite you to post and share your why for teaching. If you have your answer, it should work. <laughs> if you aren't a teacher by um, uh, you know, your profession, you may be a parent and you teach your children or teach your colleagues or whoever. I think we all teach in our life at some moment. I teach da 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 because I teach two. Is it working? <laughs> OK, good. Mm -hmm. Passionate ideas, sharing passionate ideas. Navigating complex trains. It's interesting and important.
love of communication, love of sharing with students. Active citizens encouraging the students. To, be, to see the challenges of the world around them for, and see a better way. Improve experience. Mm, exp improving their experience. Mm -hmm. Okay, any last one? I see. Anyone still working? Okay. I, I, I'm curious for new, I love to communicate, teach, to change, yes, and challenge the ideas. Very, very nice. Okay, so our why, why are we here as teachers? Thank you. Um, another question. What do you think, as teachers, is the most, ah, sorry. Sorry. Go back. Wasn't ready for that one. That's later. Why do I teach? I teach because I hope to plant seeds of change. I mentioned I'm a gardener. These are my plants in the picture. I took the picture a few days <laughs> ago. They're ready to be put into the garden when I get back. So this is my why. Why I'm at the end of the day at the meta level there in my profession. Okay, um, the 21st century challenges. Now we live in the 21st century. In your mind, what are the most significant challenges that we are facing? What do we need to change? So I teach to change. What do we need to change in the 21st century? You may have heard of think, pair, share teaching method. I don't know, I'm sure many of you do it. Think first, what are they? The most important challenges, what do we need to change? Think for 30 seconds when you're ready. Turn to a partner. With one person, share your idea. Challenge is you can use more than one here. You don't have to only choose one yet. <laughs> Okay, so um, if we could continue now, thank you for, for sharing. Um, what I've heard uh, was over here, I heard the um, social media following um, trends, what are there, the mental health problem. Here I heard something about sustainability, educational policy. Are there one or two phrases from your table you could um, mention just to? The new digital world. New digital world. Uh, adaptivity because of the challenges that uh, the world now face. Uh, adapt adaptivity, yeah, being able to adapt to things as a human species, right? Darwin said it's not survival of the fittest, it's the uh, survival of being the most adaptable, right? Okay, thank you. All right, um, what needs to change? So, I follow Joanna Macy. I heard a very good podcast by her several years ago. And what she said, we can read here, or maybe I read for you as well. The most remarkable feature of this historical moment on Earth is not that we are on the way to destroying the world. We've actually been doing, been on the way for a, quite a while. It is that we are beginning to wake up as from a millennia long sleep to a whole new relationship to our world, ourselves, and to each other. So she's, um, you can see there, a Buddhist scholar, but also a systems theorist. She sees the interconnection between all things. An ecologist, a teacher born in 1929. According to the World Economic Forum, 
We're in a poly, the perception of us being in a poly crisis threat is felt by all. You can see six out of 10 of the perceived long-term threats are climate related. Oh, you can't read it so well there. Maybe failure to mitigate climate change is number one. Failure of climate change, hard for me to read too. <laughs> adoption, um, natural disasters, et cetera. I don't have to read them. We all feel them, right? So what is a polycrisis? It's a word since 2022 uh, that's used more and more. So I think we've all heard it by now. You can read a definition there. So it's not individual crisis, it's the interconnection between them all and the way they can have a multiplier effect. Here's another visual that helps us realize this. We have economic, environmental, geopolitical, societal, technological, the interrelationships are displayed for us in that picture. So what do we do <laughs> as teachers, as human beings? What did Einstein say? What did Dewey say? Maybe you know Dewey, he's a pedagogical concept of active learning, learning by doing. We cannot solve these problems with the same level of thinking that got us into them, that brought us here. How do we think differently? How do we teach today? <laughs> we have to teach differently. And we all know that. That's why we're here. That's why we got chosen for this. So I'm not, uh, this is not coming onto ears that never heard this before. We all are experienced and choose pedagogical aspects for their uh, possibility to do this. So 21st century skills. What are the most important skills that our students need? We've defined the problems. What are the skills we can help our students with? It will be another think pair share. Um, and then uh, when you go, so uh, um, think for you first. And then you'll, you'll be able to go back to the... And then choose one in your group, okay? Empathy, yes, we are human beings. <laughs> oh, shoot, it should have been all at once, yeah? Oh, I needed those boards from yesterday. I thought of that last night. I thought, oh, maybe I should have borrowed those boards, those whiteboards. <laughs> Critical thinking. <laughs> yeah. Two more. Critical thinking, critical questioning. Yeah. One more. Or which table is missing? Okay. Curiosity. Yes, I also heard back here digitally being able to distinguish between different sources online. Does anyone want to throw out one or two more that we think should really be up there? Resilience. Resilience. Any more shout outs? Adaptation. Generic. 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 Knowledge. Yeah. What do you mean by that? Ah, okay. Mm-hmm. Okay, this kind of meta level of, you said long-term, you need long-term, not just right now, but over the next century, let's say. Mm-hmm, yeah. Hmm. Okay, the fact, what would be an example of the fact hard skill knowledge? Good question. Let me just tell you a short um, background to soft and hard skills. Does anyone know where the names for those began? The US military, why? Hard skills, machinery, weapons, soft skills. Imagine we rebranded. Hmm? 
hard hearts and minds. Okay. Um, I'm not for <laughs> war, of course. I'm for peacekeeping. But um, soft skills was the term that they used for, imagine we called them leadership skills. We wouldn't think anymore, soft, that's not important. That's what they meant by soft skills, the leadership, the emotional intelligence. These here, empathy, for example. Okay. Um, no, no. Sorry, I don't have the paid version. <laughs> I have to talk to my Hochschule. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Okay. I'm not sure if you know Peter Drucker, but he said the only skill that will be important in the 21st century is the skill of learning new skills. Everything else will become obsolete over time, a little bit like what you were saying here, right? Um, when I was in university in 1996, my professor of sociology told me, it doesn't matter what your grades are, it doesn't matter what you learn, it's your learning how to learn. That's stuck in my mind. And I believe that. Also, the World Economic Forum believes that. When you look at their definition of the 21st century skills, what do you see around all of these lifelong learning? In my course on day one, I asked the students to create a culture of these competencies. I don't only refer to them as competencies. I say, come, let's create a culture where we practice together communication, collaboration, creativity, critical thinking. So I tend to focus on these ones in the middle as the meta level um, long-term skills, but it's a language course. So they don't get specifically assessed on them. I'll tell you later about how, I, how they're actually assessed for their grade. But um, I still feel that they're learning these skills uh, throughout the course. And um, these were defined in the Future of Jobs report by the World Economic Forum as the skills judged to be of the greatest importance to workers um, at the time of this survey, yes. So you see, cognitive skills are number one and two. Uh, three, four, five, seven are these um, so-called character skills or self-efficacy skills. Um, and working with others, eight and nine, these are these soft skills, let's call them, okay? Or emotional intelligence. What of these are teachable? What do you think? Technological literacy. That would be a hard skill as well, I would say. It's a, a literacy as can I read, can I do the technology? Yes, I would agree. That's a hard skill that's, that's knowledge-based, uh, teachable. Mm -hmm. So a little bit like the previous presentation where the process of learning is, um, you said the analytical skills, right? They're learning how to analyze a cognitive skill. It can be practiced. Yeah, mm -hmm. I would agree. Mm -hmm. Okay. Would you like to give a why? Why you think that? Yeah, <laughs> okay, because you do, you're doing it and, and seeing that. Okay, I just wanted... Mm -hmm. <gasps> ah, good question. Am I asking you what do you teach or how do you help their learning and is that the same thing? <laughs> yeah, yeah, good point. Yeah, okay.
Mm -hmm. So you're a role model, and when you do it with empathy or in these ways, you're a, they see it being done. Yes, I agree. That's our experience. That's our, let's call it wisdom, if we're allowed to. Um, and we show, we, we lead by example. Very good, I agree. Um, so, have you heard of Bloom's Taxonomy? Since we're all in the educational field, yeah? So I would say these are the categories of the cognitive skills that are the focus. Um, the higher level is at the top. So you can see it like this for anyone who may not be familiar or if you'd like to refer again to remind yourself because sometimes we learned this 15 years ago, 10 years ago, and we haven't looked at it in a, in a while. It's always good to look back and see, okay, where are my students practicing at the top, the application of the skills, and where are they just wanting to, um, or let's say it like this, I've heard many of the presenters say, my students only want to know what's on the exam. They're somehow looking down here, what can I memorize for the exam? But we need to flip it around and show them, we don't want you to memorize things for the exam. Those things you memorize, you won't need in a few years. Yeah. Um, maybe that goes back to your presentation back here at our table. We talked about assessment, doing it differently, not just trying to uh, see the, what facts were memorized. But we also can have a test to, to apply the knowledge, right? So they need this, but how do we give it to them? How do they learn that part? Maybe not so much in the classroom anymore. Maybe it's in another method that's help, supported by digitalization, right? Flipped classroom, for example. Okay, um, this I'm not gonna go through. It's for your reference, maybe for the English component if you teach in English. These are question starters for how to generate the thinking skills at this level. So for example, what is profit in my business English class? How do you define, what's the definition of profit um, as a business uh, vocabulary? Versus um, how can you, um, uh, something more creative. If companies had to reinvest all of their profits, keyword profit, so what is profit if companies had to reinvent, reinvest all of their profit into nature supportive technologies, what would the world look like? Or something like this. Yeah, thinking. Thinking about if things were different. How, how would it be different? Be creative. Um, so, <clears throat> Now, um, I think the answer is, is clear. By now, we all use this method. What helps our students to develop? I would say, for me, it's, of course, active learning. Yeah, I think many of you spoke about using that. It's defined in a very simple way. Anything that involves learners and doing and thinking about what they are doing. It's not about the acquisition of facts and transmission of information. It is about cognitive development. These are my students. They said yes, I can use their picture. <laughs> so, we know it's student-centered, not lecture-oriented. We know it's based on collaborative, cooperative learning environment where the activities that we, we do with them are uh, for example, a project where they have to work together in a team. If you look at this pictorial, I think it nicely shows you can have a very active lecture with active learning. It exists. There's plenty of research supporting this. But you can also go very much to the project based in a team and everything in between. Then, I won't read through all of this. For your reference, you can refer to these, um, these citations. Basically, we know it's engaging the students. They work on problems. They, when they get timely feedback, they learn, and they're more engaged as well. Uh, if you need more benefits, they're listed here, improving uh, critical thinking to um, high levels of achievement. There's a lot of research actually showing you can, it's been um, researched for 30 years in the US by many educational um, 
departments. So <laughs> now we come to my course. How am I doing with time? Um, what do I teach? Business English C1. The students need to come up with a business idea, so it's entrepreneurial. And we simulate through the whole semester that they develop their company further and further. And at the end, they do, once they've taken uh, the Business English C1 course and the Technical English C1 course, they are awar awarded a C1 certificate. Um, the structure, I uh, am very lucky to be a department at the university which is a central institute where many other students from different departments come. So they are mostly undergraduate with a few graduate. They are a few employees of the university, right? Now I have one employee in, in my class. Um, we have mostly business and technical and economics types of departments. We also have computer scientists, some other technical areas, and some communication and media management students. And I'm very lucky that a uh, number of years ago, our, rec our um, head of the university, the president of the university, agreed to have the budget supporting a cap of 20 students per course. That really improves the quality and the learning. And so I'm very thankful to, to our university for that. Um, what is the content uh, and the topics that we cover, economics, how to pitch, sustainable circular economy, etc. You can read them to finance. What are the activities we do in the project? The students uh, identify a problem they'd like to address, environmental or social. They come up with a business solution, a sustainable business concept. They um, research the, the problem, define the problem. They need to use secondary research to, to uh, embed uh, in their project material that they must uh, give at the end of the semester. They then also write the questionnaires for the primary market research. That means there are uh, quantitative questions which are closed-ended and you can get percentages and graphs and be nice visuals to use and there is primary market um, and there are qualitative questions that means an open question like here's our project description our product uh, concept our business idea what do you think about it and the students get in groups and give each other feedback on the concept so that they can then change it to adjust it to be ready for the trade fair where um, we simulate uh, with other students in another English course that uh, takes place at the parallel time. The technical English course visits us and plays the role of um, potential business customers. And as well, the business is between, so there's maybe five or six different business groups in my class, so the teams are three to four students and they need to find ways to cooperate and collaborate as businesses together at the trade fair. Then they have to write a follow-up email to this potential business partner, a business email, um, which we were just talking over here, how formal should it be? So we look at level of formality, very formal, diplomatic, to um, non-formal, obviously not appropriate, to the middle way, which is professional, polite, but not overly formal. If you're overly formal, it's also impolite, right? So there's a middle way. Um, chat GPT, as we've noticed, got used more and more in that assignment. So the way we've tweaked it is um, they need to write it themselves. I haven't implemented the aspect of writing it themselves in the classroom yet, but I'm going to do it this uh, semester. What I did last semester was say you need to write it and then upload it to ChatGPT and use ChatGTP like a feedback tool. But um, I think I'm going to try actually having them write it in the class time that they really, really write it themselves. And then as homework, they have to interact with ChatGPT and give it prompts and say things like, what do you think of my email? Are the, could you suggest any improvements? Are there language uh, problems? Uh, why is that a problem? And they have to figure out how can I give a prompt that actually gives me personalized feedback on my, my writing. Um, job fair, right? Yes, and then as well, as a part of the simulation, they need to think what are our future plans? Where are we headed? 
we need money. We need to then here pitch our idea and ask for money from investors. But what will we use the money for? What is our future plan? According to that future plan, they need to write a job advertisement to then do role playing of job interviews to apply to each other's job positions. Um, and then at the end, <laughs> everything goes together in a five minute, uh, each student has to speak for five minutes and uh, they pitch their overall idea to investors, to impact investors. Have you heard this word impact before? To an impact, so impact is like make an impact. Have you heard of ESG before? It's quite, used to be called corporate social responsibility, CSR, now it's renamed ESG, same thing, different name, um, but hopefully real and uh, potential investors that really want to make an impact. So those are the type of investors they're appealing to with their business idea. And um, how do they get the, let's say, lower order on the Bloom's taxonomy um, learning of the vocabulary, uh, the input phase of knowing they're using the right words. Part of that is flipped classroom in Elias. It's like Moodle. If you don't know Elias, it's like Moodle. It's an LMS. And um, the, the vocabulary are like self-corrected, so they get the feedback right away. Is that right or wrong? So they can learn the words beforehand. Uh, or they knew them already, but they still, still have to take take the Elias um, exercises and have completed them as a requirement to write the final exam. So they don't have any awarded points or grades, but they, they, it is in, in the, um, the learning um, process, they, they need to do it and, and I have to check, yes, they did it or they can't sign up for the final exam. Watch authentic video, yeah. And then there's home assignments now. Watch authentic videos, read texts. Of course, there's one or there's a few students who might not have done it, but in the group work, they hear from each other. They usually mostly do it because they figure out, oh, those are the things we're gonna talk about in class, and if I'm not prepared, then mm, I can't really say much. Um, and then the in-class in uh, application of the language, so discussion, pair work, uh, et cetera. And then, of course, the feedback, so. <laughs> We talked previously about mistakes and making mistakes in, in the previous presentation. I've reframed the word mistake to get away from the students saying, oh, I don't want to make a mistake, to LP, learning potential. So I always thank them when I correct some element of their language. I say thank you for this LP for everybody here. So we create this culture of collaboration where we're learning from each other. It's a learning potential now. It's a moment for everyone to learn. Um, this is an example of how they can focus on an area to uh, define a problem that they want to address with their business idea. And um, they, they tell me, they, they write in Elias which three are they most interested in addressing. And then I make the groups based on their interest and also to make diverse teams, so male, uh, female, uh, visiting Erasmus students, different departments. I mix up the departments and, and create as much diversity in the team as possible based on their interest. And as a component, just to give you an example of our thinking about the change. Um, so how do we, like Einstein said, have a new way of thinking? We have to shift the paradigm of our thinking, right? A paradigm shift to transform our mindset of what is sustainability truly, and how do we all get on board with that? So if you've heard, I don't know if you know Kate Raworth, she's, she actually has a lot of materials I've heard for, for teaching her concepts um, at the university level. Uh, she's an economist, and she wrote the book Seven Ways to Think Like a 21st Century Economist. And her um, model is used by, um, she has many programs now in different cities where they try to implement this uh, model of staying in the donut. <laughs> it's not the, I think, yeah. It's a circle, looks like a donut, that's the point. The sweet spot, sweet spot means you wanna, s it's the nice, uh, comfy place. And you wanna stay in the green area, so we are, 
overshooting some of our planetary boundaries. Maybe you've heard every year there's some report about now, maybe someone remembers the name, but it's like June, July, August. Now we've used up so many resources we can't replace them, the overshoot day or something. How do we stop overshooting? When we overshoot, these are the boundaries we go out of. When we don't provide the needs of all human beings on this planet in the social foundation area on the inside, then we're not doing enough for those areas. Those are, by the way, also the SDG goals in the middle of the donut. Yeah. Uh, the overshoot today is actually delayed. Oh, okay. I didn't know that. Uh, it was said that that could be fake. Yeah, okay. 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 Yeah. Okay. I'm okay. Thank you. Let's check it later, but I'm okay. Sorry. No, go ahead. Okay, you disagree with the measurement, okay. Okay, it could be the measurement is really off. I, to be honest, did not check it. It made sense in my mind because it seems to me like we are overusing planetary, planetary resources, so, so I, I Perhaps the measurement and all of that is, is wrong, but I would definitely agree that um, there's a problem. <laughs> so, and it has to do with going outside of the boundaries that our Earth can sustain life with. Um, okay, but this is just an example of where the students have to, as a home assignment, watch her TED Talk. Half of the class watches her TED Talk, half of the class watches another TED Talk. They come to class and they have to, with a partner, summarize the TED Talks to each other, the, the arguments given, and discuss it. And this sets the framework for um, the, the questioning the, the current uh, paradigm of GDP growth eternally is our solution to all problems because it's not, it's actually, according to her, the root of the problem. Um, so. When they do the market research, it is this um, activity where they have their questions and they interview each other and they do a focus group where they check the qualitative questions and they get feedback on their idea. I think I've got a video here to show you. It should work. Okay, if you don't hear what you said. That's where we come in with blueprint. <laughs> with our partners, we get uh, the uh, pollution out of the ocean and then I have take no this material to use it for 3D printing. Uh, so you can you don't have to hire material okay. to print. Um, yeah, I just wanted to show that uh, he's describing his company idea and then he's going to get feedback from the others about the idea, about what they think, any critical as well um, problems that they might see with the concept. And another aspect of the course is that when we do the marketing, they have to come up with a, the, the marketing idea for their, for their concept. This was a very proactive group. I won't say that all my students do this. There, there is no specific grade awarded to these things. It's just a part of what they, they do. And they were from a media management department and they, they had fun creating this. So I just thought I'd share it with you. I was uh, really happy with their engagement. Did this ever happen to you? You bought something and your packaging was only half full and a huge waste of plastic. About 300 million tons of plastic waste is produced every year. And only 9% of this waste gets recycled. Because of that, in terms of the greenhouse effect, packaging waste is much worse than even cars. So, what can we do? The answer is, buy products with sustainable packaging. We at Green Vibes help to protect the environment by only selling products which are either completely without package or use sustainable packaging. Come to us and be part of the change. Green Vibes, Earth Smiles. Okay, so I'm sure we can debate as well what sustainability means and all of those things, but that's beyond the, the scope of, of this, I think. This 
Um, it, it just examples of pictures from the trade fair. So this was, um, they printed out the quantitative question results from their questionnaire. They present their company idea. Um, it was waste less, use less, something like sharing of devices, that the sharing type of scenario. Um, they try to attract visitors to their stand, and we just try to have fun too. We're human beings, we're alive, we try to enjoy the time that we have together. Um, yeah, but the assessment, what is it? In case you are interested, as I mentioned, it is the four skills of the CEFR. Writing, reading, listening is on the final exam day. How many? I'm so sorry, <laughs> way too long, I'm sorry. Um, then I skip ahead. Do, 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 do. This, uh, you can have a choice. So here's the rubric. I, it's, I wanted to know about the time, but. Um, mm -hmm. So we have two activities you can choose, yeah? Students, <laughs> you're not students, but fellow teachers. The two that were um, planned were one, you create your own pitch for fun, or we do the reflection and sharing with active listening, and there's some documents on your table with um, phrases there, and on one side there's especially active listening phrases. So we can vote, which one would you like to do? Would you like to try to create your own pitch for a company idea? Here's the company description. You just come up with a name and a slogan for fun and see who's the best, who, who you like most? Or is it more valuable, maybe, the reflection? Hmm? Who wants to make a pit? Who wants to create a company name and slogan? Who wants to reflect? I, uh, is this a better, yeah? Everyone would agree with the reflection? Because there's just 10 minutes. Yeah? OK. Um, or we can raise our hands. <laughs> That's why I was sad I didn't have a watch. I am uh, got a little bit over time. But. So the idea of the reflection in listening is, um, it's a communication skill. And I also practice this with the students in the class. Communication skill. Do communi uh, The framework of communication, we have sender, we have receiver. What does the sender send? What does the receiver hear? Do we really hear each other? Active listening helps you check that. So on one side of this form, there are some phrases for active listening. Have you found those phrases yet? It, I, it's not in color, but there's a... Uh, functional language, may I see this? So, functional language for discussions. One, two, three, four. It starts with the fourth one, asking for clarification. Can you elaborate on, uh, asking for clarification, can you elaborate on that? And then encouragement, please go on, I'm listening. And then checking you understood the speaker, paraphrasing, summarizing what you heard. So the, um, what I would ask you to do is I'm gonna give you the, the questions um, to reflect on and with one person, can we have pairs now or will there be one group of three? There'll be one group of, oh, now look, there's two. Here's maybe you two and then you, or you two and, and you two. So it's good to do as a pair because with the act of listening, you really have to practice to paraphrase and rephrase what you heard the person say, all right? So that's the point of this is to really actively listen And you can choose which of these questions you'd, you'd like to focus on. Okay, I'd, I'd like to bring us all together again in one big group. Have you experienced some active listening just now? Would anyone like to say one or two things about how it felt? Or one or two people say, how was that to be actively listened to? Did you experience it as good communication? It was just a made-up scenario, but uh, my colleague asked a really good open-ended question. Okay. And uh, definitely then you start, it became more real and it was like, actually, yeah, you know, it was, I, I learned something from it. So, yeah. so yeah, you know, it was, 
you can see the power of it um, in the classroom, I think, mm. obviously. Yeah. I would also say the power in life, in every relationship, right? Communication is a skill for life. Uh, yeah, and al also in communication, it's not just what we say, it's that how we act and uh, in terms of body language. And uh, uh, a lot of us, we are doing it, the active listening all the time. Even we, dis we might disagree, uh, but we still do this same thing. I think it, at least in Europe, it means the same thing. Mm, the head nod. head nod, yes. Yeah, the, not like, the, the, the magical Not like in term. India. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, yes, good point that uh, a big percentage of our communication is, is nonverbal. Yes. Mm -hmm. Any final thought? Then thank you for participating and see you in the break. You can continue actively listening or talking about those reflection questions. I'd be curious to hear your practices.